Certificate Auto Enrollment. Okay, here we are, we're back on our issuing CA and we're going to take a look at our third method of certificate enrollment, which is auto enrollment. Now, what I've actually done is I've created a, an OU called Certificate Users, and inside this OU I've moved Bob's user account and his computer account. So what we'll do now is we'll right click on Certificate Users and we'll select Properties. Then we'll come up here to the Group Policy tab and we'll create a new group policy and we'll just simply call this Certificate and then we'll double click on our new policy to open up the uh, Group Policy Object Editor. Now under our computer configuration we'll expand Windows Settings, Security Settings and then Public Key Policies. Now if we select Public Key Policies in the right hand side you can see we have five options. So we'll double click on Auto Enrollment Settings and we can see that Enroll Certificates automatically is already set. Now I like to select these next two options here which is to renew expired certificates, update any pending certificates and remove any revoked ones and also to update certificates that use certificate templates. So we'll select both of those and we'll click OK. Now the next one we want to look at here is the automatic certificate request settings. If we select that you can see we currently don't have anything to show so what we'll do is we'll right click and we'll select new automatic certificate request. Now this just starts another wizard so we'll click on next. Now we get to choose from a list of certificate templates. Now we can create certificates based on computers which are things like laptops and desktops and servers. We can also look at domain controllers, users issuing smart cards with the enrollment agent and of course IPsec. So we'll choose the default which is computer and we'll choose next and now our wizard's finished. Now the next thing we want to look at here is the uh, trusted root certification authorities. Now technically you won't have to do this but you'll want to do it as if you don't you'll have to install the trusted root CA hierarchy on your client computers manually. So what we'll do again is we'll right click and we'll select import. So this starts yet another wizard so we'll click next and now we need to provide the path to a certificate file that we've already created. So we'll click on the browse button and we'll navigate to a path where we have a, a file stored which we do here at ca root slash c dollar slash ca root p7b so we'll choose open we can see the file name has been put here and then we'll choose next and now we get to place all our certificates in the following store which is going to be the trusted root certification authorities and that's great because that's exactly where we want it to be and we'll choose next we can see the import was successful now if we move over and select our trusted root certification authorities we can see the certificate has been placed in here. Okay so here we are we're back on Bob's PC and we've rebooted his PC to make sure his group policy was refreshed. So now if we go and take a look under the trusted root certification authorities and look in the certificates we can see that CA root has now been imported here. Now if we go to our intermediate certification authorities and go under our certificates we can also see that it's brought along our intermediate and issuing CA. So we can see that auto enrollment has applied here. Now at this stage if we attempt to access our website we'll still be told we don't have a certificate because if we go to his personal certificate site we can see we don't actually have a personal certificate for Bob. Now this is because we haven't yet applied a group policy object for any user accounts only the computer accounts so let's go and do that now. Okay so here we are we're back on our issuing CA and we've completed the configuration for our computer accounts but now we need to look at our public key infrastructure policies for our user accounts. So we'll come down here to user configuration and we'll expand Windows settings, security settings and public key policies. In the right hand side you can see we have two options enterprise trust and auto enrollment settings. So we'll double click on auto enrollment settings again and we can see that we are currently enrolling certificates automatically. Now again as with before I like to select these two options which we'll do and we'll click OK. The next step is to come back here and open up our certification authority MMC. And we'll just expand this here. Now we'll come down and select our certificate templates. Now in the right hand side we can see a whole bunch of certificate templates that we already have and what we'll do is we'll come back over here, so right click on our certificate templates and we'll select manage. Now this just brings up a list of all of our certificate templates. Now because we need to configure auto enrollment for users, what we'll do is we'll scroll down and we'll select the user account, we'll right click and we'll select duplicate template. Now we need to give our certificate template a display name, so we'll just call ours corp users and we can see down here that our template name also changes to reflect the display name that we just typed in. 
Now the default setting down here is to publish the certificate in Active Directory and we'll leave that as it is. And we also have the option to not automatically enroll if a duplicate template exists. On the Request Handling tab, we can see that the purpose of our certificate is for signatures and encryption. Now we could select just encryption or just signatures if we wish, or signatures and a smart card logon. Now here we have the option of archiving the subject's encrypted private key. Now this is useful if you want to store a copy of the user's private key on the server in case their old key gets lost or corrupted. And we can also include symmetric algorithms allowed by the subject. Now this is important if we're going to use the encrypting file system as EFS uses symmetric keys. Now the next option we have here, delete revoked or expired certificates, do not archive. Now the reason this is actually greyed out is because it's only available if we do happen to select the smart card option from this drop down box here. Now we can set the minimum key length here and we can also allow our private key to be exported which is useful for backing up our private key but of course does pose an additional security risk by having your private key lying around somewhere else so if you do select this option make sure you store it somewhere secure. Now to make this all completely automatic we should select the enroll subject without requiring any user input option but you might want to prompt the user during enrollment if you like or require them to have uh, some sort of user input such as uh, if we had to enter a pin number or insert a smart card into a reader. Now on the CSP button here is where we can select whether the user can use any old cryptographic service provider or just the ones we select from this list and you can see here that there's quite a few. Now on the subject name tab we can build this information from Active Directory and that's what we want to do because our issuing CA is an enterprise CA and it will take and store information from Active Directory so we'll leave this button checked. Now you could select the top option here to supply this information in the request but this is no good as it disables auto enrollment so it's kind of pointless. Now in the subject name field it defaults to using a fully distinguished name, but we could also use a common name or no name at all. And we can also see down here that we get to include an email in the subject name. Now we check these boxes below to provide information in the alternate subject name. Now it's important to understand that if you do check boxes here, such as a user principal name, and the user's account doesn't have a user principal name, then the auto enrollment for the certificate will fail. So another thing to mention is that the email and UPN options are only relevant to user enrollment. So if we were enrolling a computer account, then we would use the DNS name and the service principal name. Now the issuance requirements tab allows us to specify a CA certificate manager for approval. If we check this box, these two previously greyed out buttons at the bottom here can be configured, which is to specify what we do when we need to re-enroll. Now we can choose the same criteria as we've already specified, or a valid certificate. And we can also set the number of required signatures we need to issue a certificate. Now on the superseded templates tab, we can specify whether this certificate will supersede another template that may already exist on a subject's computer. So to configure this option, we'll simply click on add, and then we can choose a template from the list of available templates. Now on the extensions tab, we can modify the extensions that are included with this template. So we can see for application policies, down here we have a description which tells us that this extension applies to the EFS, secure email and client authentication. So if we wanted to modify this extension, we could simply click on the extension and select edit. And now if we select add, we could add any additional application policies we want to apply to this template. Now if you happen to want a policy that's not in this list, you can select the new button and then provide any third party ones you may have. Now finally, we have the securities tab which of course is where we can use the Windows Access Control List to specify which users and groups have the ability to modify this object. Now by default, administrators, domain admins and enterprise admins have the permission required to modify these objects. Now one final thing we need to do here, because we're going to have domain users logging on to our network using our certificates, the domain users group needs to have read permission to our certificate authority as well as auto-enroll. So make sure you select both of those, otherwise auto-enrollment is not going to work for you. So we've done that, we'll click on OK. And now we see that our Corp Users Certificate template has been created. 
So what we'll need to do now is go back into our Certification Authority MMC and we'll come back here to Certificate Templates. We'll right click, we'll select New Certificate Template to Issue and then we'll select our Corp Users Template and select OK. And here we can see it's now been placed in our Certificate Templates list. So what we'll need to do now is log off our client and log back on to reapply our group policy and then our certificate should automatically be enrolled. Okay, here we are, we're back on Bob's PC. We've just rebooted his computer. We'll click on Start, Run, and we'll open up an MMC and we'll click on the File menu and open our Certificates MMC that we were using earlier. Now we can see that Bob now has a personal certificate which has been issued by our CA issue and of course uh, we can see that it's come from a corporate users OU that we created earlier. Now if we go to our trusted root certification authorities we can see that CA root has been put in there as our trusted root server and if we go to our intermediate certification authorities and look at our certificates we can see the hierarchy here of uh, CA issue, CA inter and CA root have all been included. So if we click on our CA issue we can see the certification path all the way back to the root. So we can see it took a little bit of effort to get here with regards to auto enrollment, but the benefits are certainly worth it because that means that your users or yourself of course don't have to now go and configure every single client automatically. So take the time to have a good look at auto enrollment. Setting up auto enrollment is decidedly more complex than either of the other two web enrollment or MMC methods that we looked at earlier. But of course the time savings you're going to get in the future is going to be well worth the effort you spend doing this now.